so much. Let's get going. Uh, welcome to Lehman Academy. Welcome to our middle school orientation. Uh, thanks for joining us. Our mission is to offer a rigorous classical education based on the traditions of Western culture, where all our disciplines are interrelated, allowing scholars the ability to, to think independently and critically. We purpose to partner with supportive parents to pursue excellence, to um, provide a safe and challenging environment, and most importantly, to instill morals and values in order to produce tomorrow's leaders today. Thank you for joining us in this adventure, and I look forward to walking through who we are as a middle school with you today. We're going to begin by watching a little bit of a video from Mr. O'Reilly, our VP of Relations, and he's going to walk us through that mission statement and walk us through a short video. Lehman Academy of Excellence offers a rigorous classical education based on the traditions of Western culture, where all disciplines are interrelated, allowing scholars the ability to think independently and critically. We purpose to partner with supportive parents, pursue excellence, provide a safe and challenging environment, and instill morals and values in order to produce tomorrow's leaders today. Classical education depends on a three-part process of training the mind along with promoting critical thinking. The three stages of learning are known as the grammar stage, logic stage, and rhetoric stage, and this classical pattern is known as the trivium. Our belief in partnering with supportive parents is essential to bringing out the best of what our scholars are capable of becoming. Partnering with the home is one of the core values of Lehman Academy, and Dr. Lehman would have it no other way at our academies. We also purpose to instill morals and values in order to shape tomorrow's leaders today. This is foundational to a classical education, to be pursuing the end goal, therefore designing an education that takes scholars towards wisdom and virtue. Anytime a lesson or unit of study that is interdisciplinary, where we are approaching it from the perspective of knowledge and wisdom, alongside values, virtues, and character formation, we are having a truly classical approach. Although we have many great components to our accelerated educational program, offering Spanish to kinder through second grade, providing Saxon math a year ahead, offering the study of logic in middle school, as well as providing another set of unique arts, recitations, read-alouds, and recess. It's the study of Latin that starts in third grade that will significantly improve a scholar's reading and vocabulary skills, as well as their study skills, their problem-solving abilities in math, as well as increased learning in their core subjects. As much as schools may have the classical educational model or may purpose to partner with the home or look to educate young people incorporating morals and values, Lehman Academy of Excellence offers something no other school district has in their program, and that's the proven educational philosophical approach of Dr. Kevin Lehman. Dr. Lehman believes in pursuing excellence through educating the whole child having high expectations for learners, providing a daily dose of vitamin E, encouragement, as well as some vitamin N for no. And most importantly, scholars need vitamin A to be held accountable for their actions and behavior so they can become the best version of themselves. Our goal at Lehman Academy of Excellence is to grow a generation of critical thinkers, thoughtful citizens, articulate communicators, confident leaders, and finally, to grow a generation of young adults who will make a difference locally and globally. Well, thank you, Mr. O'Reilly, for that, uh, that conversation about who we are as a school. I want to to emphasize one thing for sure. We absolutely want to promote that 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 love of education. That um, part of it that talks about fun. Uh, we we want fun to be a part of who we are in our middle school. 
we don't want it to just be the drudgery of what so often can be um, looked at as school. Our desire is to have a blast on campus, um, have a blast on field trips, uh, get a an excitement for learning and an excitement for education. That's what I want for our middle school scholars, starting in sixth grade. Um, middle school is is sixth through eighth grade. And we're going to be talking about the the details of that a little bit and what we call our middle school scholars. Um, but this goes all the way back to beginning of education with one of my dear friends, Socrates. Um, Socrates said that wisdom begins in wonder. And that quote, I want to emphasize the, the importance of it because that's really where learning starts and learning takes place, where, where wisdom starts is in that that curiosity and in the logic stage of learning curiosity is key so thank you socrates for that uh, one of my favorite poets is alexander pope and alexander pope said that a little learning is a dangerous thing he talks about the importance of not just settling for a little bit of information but being willing to dig and to drink deeply as as the rest of his poem goes on to say drink deeply of that of that education don't just be satisfied with an answer on a test but to be satisfied with a life of learning and this all gets started in our school with our classic uh, approach to education with Charlotte Mason who said an observant child should be put in the way of things worth observing these three quotes, these, these three voices from history really help to shape who we are as a middle school. And I'm excited you guys are going to join us on this adventure. We have a rigorous and classical education for you. Uh, based on those traditions of Western culture, like our, our mission statement says, our history and our English specifically are tied together in each grade level and we'll touch base on that in just a second um, the the importance of of what we do really really comes down to the interrelating disciplines where we take art and music and history and science uh, take our math problems and we and we weave them together so that our scholars get an appreciation of their education from all vantage points in order to do that, we need independent and critical thinkers. That's what we're starting in sixth grade. Sixth, seventh, eighth grade, we are preparing scholars for a lifetime of excitement and learning. We want to get them ready for high school. And the best way to do that is to get them to question, to get them to wonder about the things that are true and not true in, in textbooks and in articles, and to be able to evaluate that for themselves. In our, our logic stage of learning, we move beyond just rote memorization. That's still important. We still have recitations in our middle school where we have our scholars perform uh, in front of their classmates poems that they've memorized. That is a huge part of what we do. But just that memorization isn't what we're after. We're after the ability to take that memorized information and use it in other subject areas. So what does the school day look like? Um, I have in here that we are starting around 740 and we go to about 3. I put that, that ish in there because we are working with the Township of Oro Valley to lock down on our start and stop times. They are helping us to evaluate our traffic patterns as we are increasing in number. That is going to be more important next year. So I have meetings with the Township to make sure that we are doing the best that we can to have a safe environment coming to and leaving from campus. So about 7.40 to 3 o'clock, I'll be publishing those specific uh, times a little bit later in the summer. The scholars will have a homeroom, they'll have six class periods, and they'll have an elective. They will be changing classes throughout the day, so they will not have the same teacher all day. So beginning in sixth grade, they will have a different teacher for each of their subjects. 
uh, we have right now we have three homerooms per grade level. So we have three groups of sixth graders, three groups of seventh, and three groups of eight. Um, in the middle of the day, we've got a lunch and a recess time that's blocked out at 30 minutes. And they will be, the scholars will be eating in our new uh, cafeteria on the middle school wing of our building. So they'll have the opportunity to do that and then opportunity to get outside for some recess as well. One of our, our visions from this year that I pulled out of our mission statement was the pursuit of excellence. And that I want to always characterize what we're doing. I, I want to have a growth mindset for our scholars, for our teachers, for me, for Mrs. Hoppy, our vice principal, uh, for our office staff. I want to always be in a place where we are looking to excel and looking to grow. We are royals, and that means more than just a, um, a name on a shirt that we can wear. But it speaks to our character, and we want to pursue that excellence in our middle school by, by developing leaders in our 6th, 7th, and 8th grade through our SWAT program, our students, or scholars, I should say, working as a team. That's our student council, um, led this year by Lainey Bryant. Uh, she's doing a great job and is working on a talent show right now that we're doing virtually. So I'm excited for that. I have some videos to post in my morning announcements uh, coming up soon. But the idea that we're not stagnant is huge with, with who we are as a school and what we're looking for for our scholars. In order to get there, we have to have a little bit of a shift from elementary. Um, this shift begins at homeroom. Parents in sixth grade, you will no longer have a homeroom teacher that is responsible for the whole day's worth of learning. But you will now be faced with working with multiple teachers in multiple different subjects. And as much as we try and streamline and coordinate what our teachers are communicating to families, there, there are more teachers that you'll have to be relating to uh, throughout the day and throughout the year. One teacher will not be able to answer all of the questions that you have. So that mindset shift for parents is going to need to happen, and kids is going to need to happen for you as well. You're no longer going to be in one classroom and one desk all day long, but you'll be traveling through the building and going to different classes. Similar to the way you would go to art, music, and PE all the way through elementary, but now it's going to be every class period that you'll be switching. One of the biggest shifts is in the, um, in the mindset of advocating for yourself. Scholars, this is something that you are going to need to work on from day one till the last day of school in eighth grade. Learning to advocate for yourself is a key to success in high school, in college, and in life. That is going to be an important skill that you're going to need to begin to develop as a sixth grader because because you won't have just one teacher to talk to. You'll have to learn how to communicate with all of your different teachers. That could be a little bit scary for sixth graders coming in, but our, our sixth grade team is excited to work with you guys. Eighth graders, this may be old, old hat information and you won't have a problem uh, advocating for yourself, but I think it's a good reminder to recognize that it's not just your parents who are, who are responsible for your education and getting you to school, but it is your responsibility to take some ownership of what you're learning. We do encourage that in the younger grades, but when sixth grade hits, it really starts to pick up speed. You're gonna to need to navigate email through our Lehman email address. You are going to need to keep track of assignments. You are going to um, need to navigate scholar hours and pay attention when scholar hours are. It may look different than an elementary setting. It may be a little more of an environment where you are invited to participate um, in those scholar hours. It may be an opportunity for you to just get extra study. Um, but those scholar hours are going to be important for you to learn how to advocate for them. Asking for help is the biggest piece. When you're struggling, if you're nervous, you need to be able to ask for help. 
So sixth graders, seventh graders, eighth graders listening to this. Um, if you are nervous, you can always come to me. You can always come to Mrs. Hoppy. You can always stop by the office and ask a question. You can always touch base with your teachers and ask, what is it going to be like? What do I need to do? How much homework am I going to have? Those questions are good to ask, and I encourage the beginning of those questions even now. The second piece that is a huge weight in middle school is organization. Um, so advocacy is, advocacy is one and organization is kind of the other. We're going to have shuffled classes this year coming into sixth grade where you will not be with the same group of scholars all day long. It's very different than fifth grade. Uh, but in sixth grade, your classes will change. Each class period, you won't be with the same cohort of scholars all day long. So that is something that you're going to need to get used to and get organized with so that you know where your classes are and who you're going to class with. Supplies. They're going to look a little bit different than elementary school. Um, the supply list we will be putting together and sending those out. Um, but there's going to be things that you're going to need to get the first week of school. We are trying to work hard to, to navigate that process so that it is clear and understood so that families do not need to buy the wrong thing and then come into the first week of school and then have to go re-shopping all over again. So we're gonna be communicating as best we can on those supplies for binders, um, for uh, index cards, and what kind of notebooks are needed and all of that. Each class is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, the calculator you need in seventh grade is gonna look different than the calculator you may need in eighth grade. We will try and communicate all of that in as clear of a manner as possible. You're going to have lockers in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Um, I can hear the cheering from here. Um, you, you are going to have lockers, and learning how to navigate that is going to take some time. Remembering your locker combination, learning how to work a locker combination, um, it's going to be an, an exciting time. It's going to be challenging for some, uh, but we're here to work with you on that. Um, your backpacks and how to organize those backpacks. That may, again, that may look different than in fifth grade. You're not going to have a desk where you can leave a big bulk of things uh, all day long. You're going to have to navigate your locker and your backpack to make school work. These things are not things that we're going to expect you to just know. Even our eighth graders who have not had lockers with us, these are not things that we're going to expect you to just know. We are going to walk through that with you. So what does this building look like? Well, we've got 18 classrooms. We have a chemistry lab. We have a biophysics lab. We've got a music room. We have an art room. We have a cafeteria. All of these things are, are here for you guys as middle school scholars. Sixth, seventh, and eighth will be in this building. Um, more than likely, we'll have fifth grade joining us in part of this building as well. There are, there are lots of opportunities to grow as a middle school. Ultimately, when we are full to capacity, we will have five homerooms in each grade. So we'll have five eighth grades, five seventh, and five sixth. Uh, but like I said earlier, this year we will be at three homerooms for each of those grade levels. I saw a question in there, are we going to have different PE music and art teachers? We are doubling our specials teachers. We will have a middle school PE teacher, a middle school art teacher, and a middle school music teacher. Um, and we'll be communicating that a little bit more when we have those specifics nailed down. So we've got this new building that we're going to all be joining and, and enjoying. It looks great. The furniture is getting put together and being put in there. Um, Mrs. Hoppy and Mrs. Terpstra have been overseeing some of that and making sure bulletin boards are in the right place and whiteboards. So thank you, ladies, for doing that, um, getting ready for this next year. This safe and challenging environment and curriculum that we are, we are promoting starts in sixth grade. We're going to walk through here very briefly what an outline of the curriculum looks like in each of the subjects. So 
ELA and history are are tied pretty closely. Um, that that plays to our classical model of education, and it plays to just good a good approach to how to learn. In sixth grade, we're studying medieval history and medieval literature. In seventh grade, we move into an early modern up to the revolutions around there um, uh, time period in both English and history. And then in eighth, we are looking at the modern world, modern American history, modern world history, modern uh, American literature, and modern world literature. In science, we are going to be, this year we're going to be studying Earth and Space because our fifth graders studied biology. Uh, so the sixth graders will be studying Earth and Space. Next year, we're going to be shifting our curriculum and our sixth graders will be studying biology next year. So this year, our fifth grade is also studying Earth and Space Science. Seventh grade is Chemistry and eighth grade is Physics. In math, we've got course two, course three, and algebra one that we're preparing our scholars for in preparation for geometry or algebra two in high school, depending on which school the scholars go to. Um, the algebra one is a high school credit. Uh, we are working with the high schools to make sure that handoff is appropriate and, and good and valid. And our high schools in the area will work with our scholars to make sure that they are placed in the right high school course after eighth grade. A little bit of change in our Latin and logic uh, debate. And I'm throwing in this new word geography here. Uh, so let me talk through this real quickly. In sixth grade, we're going to have Latin. Uh, it's a continuation of our upper elementary Latin program. It'll be an everyday class. And then in seventh grade, that class is going to transition primarily into logic. Uh, the, the entire year will be a logic course. In eighth grade, that logic course becomes a debate class where scholars will learn the, the fine uh, skills that they'll need in order to conduct debates and learn the ins and outs of of how to do that and how to support your arguments. Also in eighth grade, that debate class will be split in, in two. There will be a geography section, which I'm really excited about because that will be in preparation for getting our scholars ready for an AP class in ninth grade. A lot of high schools are moving to a an AP human geography course and by moving geography into a, its own component of eighth grade, we're going to do a better job preparing our high school scholars um, moving away from, from Lehman into high school. We're going to be preparing them to take that AP course. So I'm really excited about that. And I have a lot more information that we're going to be sharing as the, as the year begins. Art, music, and PE, like I said before, these are going to be middle school teachers that are going to be teaching these courses. Uh, they're going to be a full class period. So it's going to be a little bit longer than it was this past year, but it'll be a full class period. And it'll, you'll have that course similar to this past year once every three days. So you'll go, for example, maybe art, then the next day you'll have music, then the next day you'll have PE, and then the next day you'll have art. So that rotation will continue. Um, we are not necessarily going to be on a six-day cycle like we were this past year, but in effect, the specials classes will run very similar, similarly to that. Our Tuesdays will still be an early out. Uh, that won't change. Uh, we stick with Amphi for that, and our calendar is online at this time. There is a word on this page that I know many parents and many scholars have been anticipating seeing. This word, electives. Yes, we are going to be offering electives. Um, I don't have an elective course listing set out yet. That is something that I want to invite our teachers to be a part of and to, to help develop because those electives I want to be a passionate part of our school. That are, that are taught with excitement and are learned with excitement. So those electives, we will be putting that schedule together over the summer and be putting that out for 
uh, signups for those electives. They probably will not start the first week of school, but in the in the first couple of weeks of school, we will get that uh, elective um, sign up put out there, and then we will start those courses pretty soon after the beginning of school. I'm excited about electives too. Um, one thing that's really important, uh, this is this is for the parents, but also for the kids to hear. Partnering with supportive parents is at the heart of what we're doing. It's the only way that we can truly be effective as teachers, as educators, as a school, is with this partnership. So I want to thank parents. If you are watching this, I want to thank you for your involvement in your in your child's life, in their education. You are the, the primary educator in, in each child's life. We come along to help, especially in this, in this season where, uh, where our kids are at home, where you have your children at home and trying to facilitate education. Um, it, is, it is important for you to recognize that we see you as valuable in the educational life of your child. And we want to invite you to be a part of our school. In middle school, there's a tendency for volunteers of parents to drop off a little bit, uh, to lessen a little bit. But I want to go on record and saying, no, get into school. We can use your help in our middle school classes. We can use your our, use your help in, in preparing good lessons for our scholars, in coming in and being a guest speaker, a guest uh a teacher for our scholars. So please let me encourage you to do, to do that. With communication with our parents, we've done a couple things in this new virtual world that we find ourselves in at the end of uh, the, uh, the school year here, but uh, communication is important. We are working on putting together our lesson plans in a way that is easily viewable for you at home. That's something that we can continue as we move into next year so that there can be an overview of, of assignments and of what, is due, of what is due coming up. Our teachers have been using Google Classroom. I'm sure that there's going to be opportunity to utilize technology like that in the future, even when we're back on the brick and mortar, in the brick and mortar setting. So um, continue to look for ways to partner with us through communication, but also being on campus. That volunteer piece is huge and we can't do it without families willing to be a part. Uh, even if it's an hour a month, we could use your help on a playground or in the office to help give these scholars the environment that they need. I see a bunch of questions coming in here. Um, so I will be touching base on those, or I'll be touching base with those at the end of this, but we're gonna just roll through the last couple slides here. Um, morals and values. Morals and values are a um, are the, the linchpin of what we do. If we can't look at character of a scholar, if we can't look to infuse um, just, just good morals and good values in what we're teaching, then we are missing a mark on what our role as educators are. So we are going to be continuing to look at habits of the heart. We're going to be continuing to look at virtues each and every month, drawing out of characters in history, uh, virtues and values, characters in science that may have pushed the bounds of what was considered right at the time. Um, and we're going to be wrestling with those virtues and values on a regular basis in our classrooms as a part of our curriculum. Keeping in mind always that we are looking to build tomorrow's leaders today. I don't want to send eighth graders out into the world with a selfish attitude thinking that they're the only person on the planet that matters. My heart, Dr. Lehman's heart, is that our kids are excited to serve and are excited to help others. That is the hallmark of what makes us royal, is those virtues and values. And you will feel that when you walk through the halls. You will feel that when you hear assignments that come home. Kids, you're going to experience what it means to 
to learn to be virtuous, learn to hold things in high value. This is the part that <laughs> chokes me up a little bit. It really does, though. Um, it it's the it's the part of school that we are never going to shy away from, and it's the part of school that makes the the most impact on our futures. So, parents, I'm grateful that you are deciding to join with us in this adventure. Um, we can't do it without you. Part of those virtues and values is how we carry ourselves. And yes, we have a dress code. Um, yes, there is some controversy over how big a logo can be on a sweatshirt. But here's the bottom line. Our dress code is plain colors. Uh, our dress code is pretty, pretty detailed on our website. This is just an image from our website. Um, here, let me pull my picture down here just for a second. Um, it's, it's pretty detailed. Uh, where it says, please see below for full details right here. If you scroll down, not on this presentation, but if you scroll down on our website, it gives you the ins and outs of what is allowed for our dress code. Um, in short, plain colors, plain polo, plain colored pants. Um, for all the details, please check out our website so that you are ready for the beginning of school. Uh, one thing important to know for our dress code, we are not looking for a specific brand or a specific company. So it can be, you can you can gather clothes from any company as long as they meet these, these basic uh, requirements. In addition to that, any Lehman attire, uh, other than t-shirts, any Lehman polo, any Lehman sweatshirt would be acceptable um, for, as a part of that dress code. So um, this brings us kind of to the, the end of that presentation component. I'm going to sit here and look through a couple of these uh, questions that have popped up. Now would be a great time to start typing those questions in if you have not already. There is a slight delay in what I'm speaking and what you're hearing. So I'm, I'm going to be quiet here for just a second as I read through the list of of questions and I will try and answer those as best I can. All right. I have a question um, here about will an advanced band be offered? Well, I'm really excited to announce that uh, Mr. Harold is going to be our middle school music teacher. Um, and he is a, uh, a jazz musician and is excited about exploring the options for some advanced bands as part of our elective offerings. So our electives are not going to be just offered by our middle school teachers, um, our core middle school teachers, but also by our, our specials teachers will have an opportunity to offer electives as well. Now, the ins and outs of that, I don't have nailed down. Um, will it be an after school activity? Possibly. Will it be an elective opportunity? Possibly. We're going to be working on that together to figure that out. But I know we have the expertise coming on campus next year to really um, to really have some neat classes. It's a great question about band. A full class period. Um, our class periods are right around the 54 minute mark. So that is the length of each of our classes. Our lunches will be at about 30 minutes. Um, we will have a unique uh, setting in the middle of the day where there will be a couple classes that will be split in two. So there will be a part A of the class, and then the scholars will have lunch, and then a part B of the class. That will likely be during a special, but we are putting those schedules together to make sure that that is clear and that the kids have the appropriate amount of time that they would need in those classes.
good question about uh, middle school music class for instrument skill building, uh, band or orchestra. Um, a lot of our music instruction has been choral, uh, and that will continue. Uh, everybody's got their own uh, set of pipes that they can they can use in music class, so that's a good thing. We will be obviously exploring rhythms and different things like that. Um, I know that in brief conversations with the new music teacher and with Mrs. Ward, who is going to be in our elementary school music program, but um, in working with them, they've got some great ideas for ways to expand our, our music program. Same with art, same with PE. We're really looking to explore um, some new opportunities. Now that we are doubling our specials uh, staff, we're literally, literally doubling them. Uh, I'm excited for having some new opportunities. Uh, question about high school. Um, we are not planning, um, as far as I know, to have a middle school as a part of our public charter school. I know there have been conversations about the private Lehman Academy, that which would be the high school um, over on the west side of town, but I have not heard any details about that. Um, if you want to contact our, our central office, you're welcome to do that uh, to see if there's any more information about that. But as of right now, we are not making pursuits for a high school. Will watching CNN be a required part of the curriculum? Uh, interesting. Um, I don't know that I can answer that right now. I think there are some some components that are really good, and there's some components we have to be careful about. Um, I personally, I love Carl Azus. Uh, no, he, I'm not getting any compensation for saying that, but I think he does a great job uh, working for the kids um, for for that morning news. Uh, I think it's a, a great thing. I would encourage parts of that. As far as part of the curriculum, that's something that we need to work with our teachers as a team to establish what we're going to do for our, our middle school and for our elementary school. But great question about that. It's definitely something that I'll, I'll take to our leadership team. Changing clothes for PE. No, we are not going to be changing clothes for PE. On PE days, the scholars are encouraged to wear appropriate attire for that. And so that's part that goes back to that organization piece that I was talking about, making sure that you understand your schedule, making sure that the scholars understand their schedule. On our website, there's always going to be a communication of what day it is. Uh, in that in that cycle so that families will know if if they have pe on a specific uh day of the cycle not a day of the week because remember we have three specials so it's not going to be every monday necessarily but it may be on different days um in the elementary school we are toying with a couple different plans for that so if you're concerned about elementary hold on to those thoughts uh and we'll address those in the future Uh, extracurricular and athletics for our middle school. Um, I didn't even bring this up, so thank you for, for writing that, uh, Mrs. Hackett. Um, the, um, we, have, we have a great athletic program for our middle school scholars. So in the fall, we've got uh, girls volleyball and we have co-ed flag football. We've got co-ed soccer. Um, we have... Uh, girls softball, we've got girls basketball and boys basketball. We also started a rather large cross-country um, intramural club this year that I would love to see turn competitive. So the coaches and I have been talking at the end of this past year and we are looking to see if we can get into any uh, competitions for cross-country. Uh, we're going to start there with our running club uh, for cross country. At the very least, we will continue with the club. But if we can get in and do some competitions, I would love to see that happen. Uh, 
as as with um, years past, we will still have clubs. Uh, that club offering will only increase. We've got more space. Uh, so stay tuned for that. The announcements for what clubs we will be starting will come out some some point right in the middle of the summer where we have that allocated and we know uh, what spaces we can give to those clubs so that we can know what we can offer. As far as the building being open, we, um, you can't hold me to this, but I'm fairly certain that we will be in that building this May uh, to be able to start setting up classrooms. Um, I'm excited about it. The construction workers have been taking their time with this recent shutdown, but just to make sure that they are practicing social distancing, but they've been doing a phenomenal job finishing up our campus. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. Uh, sharing lockers. No, every scholar is going to have their own locker. That's a good question. question about how many recesses um so in the middle of the day the scholars will have a recess uh at different points we have some different spots on campus that teachers can take their their scholars out as a part of class uh so there will be other opportunities as well to to get outside there's um there is a little bit of window of time that we can play with in the afternoon where our elective classes will be to have uh, a potential afternoon uh, opportunity for recess. But that's not something that I'm planning specifically right now, but it is something that I'm looking at. So good question for that. Question about piano being a part of band or orchestra. Uh, both of our music teachers play piano uh, and play different instruments. Um, and so instruction with piano will, will definitely continue to be a part. Instruction of piano, I think the, the concepts can be taught. We don't have necessarily the, the keyboards right now to be able to um, have actual classes, but that could be something down the road that we can offer as maybe an elective or as an after school activity. How many teachers are we going to have for middle school? Um, so again, you'll have the English, you have history, math, science, Latin, logic, or debate. Um, you will have your um, three specials teachers. Um, we've got our other instructors that are in the middle school as well. So, uh, Mrs. Blevins working with, um, our ESS program. So you could, you could have, uh, eight or nine teachers, uh, throughout the course of, of the day. Um, or I should say of the week, you're not going to have art, music, and PE all in one day. You only have one of those a day. Um, but you could have about eight, eight teachers. Little throw out or a little shout out, I should say, for the running club. Great. I'm glad you kids enjoyed it. Parents, I hope you enjoyed it too. So fifth fifth grade, a um, little upset that there wasn't any field trips this year. We are looking to establish a field trip uh, protocol for our scholars, for our teachers. That's something that we're going to kickstart the year with, with when our teachers get back on campus to start planning activities like that. So that there are activities in each grade. So great question on field trips. Um, just a little shout out for any fifth graders that are on here. We do have your um, Drug Awareness Day t-shirts. We have them, um, and please look for information from Mrs. Terpster about that if you have not gotten that already. Oh, baseball. Baseball would be fun, wouldn't it? Um, is there opportunity for a baseball team? Um, that's a tough one. That is a, a specific uh, group of kids at a specific group of time, uh, and it can get pretty expensive. So as of right now, we are not planning on a baseball team. That can change 
It depends on a couple of different things. It's something that I watch regularly. So as soon as I know that we may have an opportunity, I will let you guys know. Um, I would I would encourage you to not hold your breath too tightly, though. Uh, we are pretty established in the sports that we are playing, um, and I. I want to continue to see us grow. We got to the championships in a couple different sports this past year. So way to go Royals. Um, Royal up in Oro Valley because some of our competitions are against some other Royals in different parts of our city. But, um, but I will let you know if I hear anything about baseball, I'll let you know. Language as an elective. Great question. Um, that's something that I would love to see. We have several teachers on our campus that speak different languages. Um, German is represented, uh, Spanish is represented, um, sign language is represented. So I would love to be able to see uh, some of those other languages being offered as electives. So that's something that we're going to talk about as a, as a group of teachers. So great question, though. Traffic studies, are they being done? Um, oh, that is a good question because <laughs> they are being done. Um, I don't have any details. I just got an email this week from uh, the township saying that they are getting ready to have a conversation with me to give me some more information. If there's anything that I find out that I can let you guys know about, I definitely will do that. But great question for that. Uh, are middle schoolers sharing playgrounds with elementary? Um, yes and no. The facility, yes. Uh, up on the north side of the property where the Gaga pit is, uh, that is a, a shared space. We are doing our best to make sure that there's no overlap. So we don't want third graders and eighth graders out on the playground at the same time. And we're going to do our best to maintain that space. Let me see if there's any other questions here. How many kids in a class? Excellent. We've got our our cap is around is at I shouldn't say around. Our cap is 27 scholars. We do have some um, areas where we may need to flex with that, uh, depending on some different situations. If that ever does have to happen, we have a lot of conversations as a team. Is this something that, that is necessary? Is this something that we need to do? For example, we may have a situation um, based on uh, a math class or something that needs to be shifted that may push another class over by one. Uh, that's something that we will be working with very carefully. It's not something that we say, oh yeah, we'll do this. It's definitely something that we take very seriously. Uh, so we do try and cap those classes at 27. All right. Well, I believe I got to all of the questions in, in the chat session or um, yeah, in the live chat. If I have missed something, please send me an email, ecarry at lehmanacademy.org, and I will gladly respond to you. Uh, families, thank you for being here. Kids, thank you for being online. Thank you for jumping into that chat early and, and talking to each other already. I appreciate that. I love that. Um, I miss you guys. I miss having you on campus. Uh, families, parents, I miss seeing your cars drive by using your blinkers and driving cautiously through the, the circle. Um, uh, quick note on that, if you are a new family, we do not have buses. Uh, we Everything is pick up and drop off. Um, and we will, we will continue to provide more information when we can nail down what our start and stop times are on that process. Um, uh, but families, thank you for being here. Thank you for partnering with us. I know this is a little bit long of an info session coming in just under an hour, um, but we can't do this without you guys. And we're grateful for you being here. Grateful for you checking this out online. If you are watching this at a later time and you have questions, 
please don't rely the chat feature or comments feature in YouTube to get to me necessarily right away. So if you can email me at my email address, again, that's ecarry at lehmanacademy.org. I'll be able to respond a lot better and a lot more efficiently. So I would appreciate that. Um, I've seen a handful more things come in. Let me just see if I need to answer anything real quick. All right. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, um, thanks for being here. I am your principal, Mr. Carey. I look forward to great a great year next year and a great summer. If we can get on campus this summer, we'll do that and we'll set some things up for you kids uh, to be on campus to see each other. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we can all get back to normal pretty soon. Um, but I, I'm just so grateful for being a part of this family. Um, together, we are producing Tomorrow's Leaders today. I hope you guys have a great night and a great afternoon tomorrow. Make it a great day. Make it a great weekend. Um, and let's make it a great school year. Encourage each other and build each other up.